Hi all, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and I welcome you all to this amazing session on Looker interview questions. So we are continuing with our interviews question series. So before this, also we have covered a lot of things related to interviews, such as MuleSoft, Snowflake, Python, and so on. So Looker is another interesting uh, tool you can say out in the market as of now, and there are a lot many job opportunities that are available with Looker. So if you are someone who is having an interview related to Looker in like in few days. So this video will act as a revision for all the concepts that you know related to Looker. So just before the interview, if you go through this video, you'll have maximum questions covered here, and uh, we have addressed at least 30 questions in this video. And I, as far as the topics are concerned, this is the most comprehensive video on this topic, Looker. So let's move ahead with our video. And before moving ahead, I want you guys to subscribe to Mind Magic's YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from us. So let's begin with this interview questions of Looker. So before that, you know, uh, there are various questions related to Looker, such as, you know, what is Looker? So these are very basic questions, like, for example, what is Looker? Uh, how does Looker work? What is Looker architecture, features of Looker? How do you install Looker? So these are very basic. You must know the answers of this question. These are very basic and we have not covered those questions here. OK, so we have just we just went one step ahead and we have covered the further questions which are very important as far as the looker interview questions are concerned. So the first and foremost question here is what do you mean by business intelligence? So business intelligence is nothing but a combination of approaches that an organization or a company uses for the purpose of data analysis. So the useful data can easily be generated from the bulk information that seems totally useless. So the biggest benefit of generating the data is that informations and decisions can be easily made as far as the organization is concerned. So this was the quick definition of business intelligence. So the next question here is what do you mean by the term SSIS? Does it have any direct relation with the SQL Server? So SSIS stands for SQL Server Integration Services. So when it comes to performing some important tasks related to both ETL and migration of the data, the same is widely adopted across many organizations. So basically it is a very useful to enable the automatic maintenance of the SQL Server, and that is why it is considered to have a close relationship with the SQL Server. Although maintenance is not required regularly, this approach that you follow, that is SSIS, is highly beneficial. So let's move forward. And the next question is, what are the three categories in the data flow? So the three categories in the data flow are nothing but transformations, data sources, and data destinations. So users can also define other categories in case the need for the same is realized, such as, you know, you can also have the custom categories. However, it is not possible that all the features work well in that particular category. So let's move ahead with the next question. Is it possible for businesses to utilize the same resources for business intelligence or the BI, or do they need experts for this purpose? So the answer to this question, you know, it depends from organization or you can say the domain of the business of the organization. So most of the organizations have realized that there is actually no need for this particular thing. So the current workforce can be easily trained and most of the desired outcomes can be easily expected out of this. So this was a very important question and you can say this is a scenario based questions like for those guys who have hands on experience or you know some experience related to local. So basically this question you can expect this question like these kind of questions for experienced folks. So the next question is among the file deployment and the SQL Server deployment, which one is better and why? So generally experts prefer SQL Server for deployment purpose. And the reason for it is that it provides quick results without compromising on the most important parameter, which is safety. So let's move ahead. And the next question is, are you familiar with the cache modes which are available in Looker? How many of them are present in Looker? So there are basically three modes and all of them are equally powerful. OK, so which are these modes? The first one is the full cache mode. The second one is the partial cache mode and the third one is the no cache mode. So this was a very important question and you must keep this in mind. The next question is what exactly do you know about the full cache mode in Looker? OK, so as you can see, this question is an extension to the previous question. OK, so depending upon the interviewer, he might ask you to explain one or any three of the cache modes in Looker. OK, so this particular question is about full cache mode in Looker. So basically, this is one of the very powerful modes in, in which SSIS analyzes the entire database. So this is done prior to the prime activities. The process continues until the end of the task. So data loading is one of the prime things 
which is generally done following this approach, which is the full cache mode. Let's move ahead with the next question. Does the log have a relation with the packages? So the answer to this question is yes. So they are very closely related to the package level. Even when there is a need for the configuration, the same is done only at the package level. So the next question is, what are the noticeable differences you can find upon comparing DTS and SSIS? So this is a very important question. So basically DTS stands for data transformation services while SSIS stands for the SQL Server Integration Services. So these were the full forms of DTS and SSIS. Now if you talk about the difference, so SSIS can handle a lot of errors irrespective of their complexity, size, and the source. On the other hand, the error handling capacity of DTS is very limited. The next point is there is actually very less business intelligence functionality which is present in the DTS, while the SSIS allows for full business intelligence integration. Okay, now, if you talk about the few more points, so SSIS comes with an excellent development wizard and this particular feature is absent in case of DTS. Okay, so when it comes to transformation or you can say the data transformation, DTS cannot compete for SSIS. Okay, so these were some of the points of comparison between the DTS and SSIS. So as you can clearly see, SSIS scores well over DTS. The next question here is, what do you mean by the term drilling in data analysis? So it is basically an approach that is used for exploring the details of the data that seems useful. So basically when you do the exploratory data analysis, so in that particular stage, you can use this term drilling. And using the drilling concept, you can understand what aspects or what information related to data is useful and which information is not useful. So it can also be considered to eliminate all the issues such as authenticity and copyright. Let's move to the next question. What exactly do you know about the execution of SSIs? So there are multiple features for logging and they always make sure of log entries. So this is generally taken into consideration when the runtime error declares its presence. So although it is not possible to enable this by default can simply be used for writing the messages that are customized. And there is a very large set of log providers that fully support by the integration services without bringing the problem related to the compatibility. It is also possible to create log providers manually. All of the log entries can be written into the text files very simply and without any third party help. So let's move on to the next question. So the next question is very important and you must keep this in mind or you must answer this question in the interview. Okay, so what do you mean by the term pivoting? So data can be easily switched from row to column and vice versa. So the switching categories related to this are considered as pivoting. So pivoting makes sure that no information is left on either row or on the column when the same is exchanged by the user. Let's move to the next question. Compare no cache mode with the partial cache mode. So we have seen what are the three cache modes in the looker and this question can be considered as an extension to this question. Like if you know all the three modes, so you can easily compare all of the three or any two of them. So this question talks about the comparison between the no cache mode with the partial cache mode. So upon adding the new rows, the SSI starts analyzing the database. The rows are only considered or allowed to enter only if they match with the current existing data and sometimes it creates problems when the rows come instantly one after the other. On the other side, the no cache mode is a situation when the rows are generally not cached. So this was a very important difference between the no cache mode and the partial cache mode. So if you answer this question, so this will create a very good impression of yours on the interviewer. So he or she will understand that you know the concepts very well. The next question is, what exactly do you know about the control flow? So all the containers as well as the tasks that are executed when the package runs are considered as control flow. Basically their prime purpose is to define the flow and control everything to provide the best outcomes. So there are also certain conditions for running a task. The same is handled by the control flow activities. It is also possible to run several tasks again and again. So this always makes sure of the time saving and the things that can be easily managed in the right manner. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, what do you mean by the term OLAP? So OLAP is nothing but online analytical processing. 
so it is basically a strategy that is used for arranging the multi dimensional data although the prime purpose is to analyze the data the applications can also be manipulated in case the need for the same is realized the next question is in analytics project what are the steps which are important at every stage so this is a very important question so as you can see on the screen these are the various steps which are related to an analytics project so the first step is the exploration of the data the next step is defining problems and the solutions for the same the third step is tracking and implementation of data and the next stage is data modeling after that you have data validation and then you have the data preparation so these are the various steps and this i uh, as i have already told you this is a very important question as far as the looper interview is concerned the next question is what exactly do you understand by the deployment of the packages which are related to the ssis so for this there is a file tagged as the manifest file actually it needs to be run with the operation the same always make sure of the authenticated or the reliable information for the containers and without the violation of any of the policy so users are free to deploy the same in the sql server or in the file system depending upon the needs and the allocation so let's move ahead with the next question so the next question is name the components of the sql server integration service that is the ssis which is considered for ad hoc queries so for the ad hoc queries the best option or the best component that is available in ssis is nothing but the ola engine so ola as we have already discussed which it stands for online analytical processing the next question here is what are the control flow elements that are present in the sql server integration service or you can say the ssis so these are the functionality related tasks that are responsible for providing proper functionality to the process containers that are responsible for the offering structures in the different packages so constraints that are considered for connecting the containers executables in a defined sequence all of these elements are not always necessary to be deployed in the same tasks also they can be customized up to a good extent so let's move on to the next question can you name a few tools that you can deploy for the data analysis So as you can see on the screen, these are the various tools that you can use, and the most commonly used are Rapid Miner, Node Excel, Wolfram Alpha, KNI ME, or you can call it Nine, Solver, Tableau, as well as the Fusion Tables by Google. So let's move ahead with the next question. So name the methods that are helpful against the multi-source problems. So identification of records that are similar to add second is restructuring of the schemas. so this was a very simple question and let's move ahead with the next question so in data analysis what will you call the process that places the data in the columns and in the rows so this is generally called the process of slicing okay so as we have seen in the previous questions we saw the concept of drilling okay so after drilling another important concept is that of slicing so what is the use of slicing so slicing always makes sure that the data is at its defined position or you can see the location and no errors could be there because of this okay so drilling and slicing are very important concepts as far as the data is concerned let's move ahead with the next question what are the prime qualities that any expert data analyst must have so the very first thing is the right skills with the right ability to collect organize and disseminate big data without compromising the accuracy the second big thing should be robust knowledge of course and the technical knowledge in the database domain is also required at several stages in addition to this a good data analyst must have leadership quality and patience too so what is the use of patience so patience is required because gathering useful information from useless or you can say the unstructured data is not a easy job it is a very tedious task so analyzing the data sets which are very large in size needs time to provide the best outcomes in few cases So let's move ahead with the next question and the next question is which container in a package is allowed for logging of information to a package log So every container or task is allowed to do this however they need to be assigned during the initial stage of the operation for this purpose And the next question is name a few approaches that you will consider for the data cleaning or you can say the data cleansing So any general method can be applied to this however the first thing to consider is the size of the data So if it is too large if like the data is too large uh, like you can see if it is in the size of terabytes so it should be divided into smaller components so analyzing the summary statistics is another approach that you can follow for this purpose so creating utility functions is also very useful and a very reliable technique
the next question here is what do you understand by the term logistic regression so it is basically an approach that is considered for proper verification of a data set that contains independent variables okay the verification level is based on how well the final outcome be depending upon the variables so it is not always easy to change them once they are defined so this was another important question related to the data exploration the next question is how well can you define data flow so what is data flow it is basically a task that is executed with the help of ssis package and is responsible for the data transformation the source and the destination are always well defined and the users can always keep pace with the extensions and modifications so this is because the same is slowed up to a very good extent and users are always free to get the desired information regarding this from and the support sections so this was all about the data flow the next question is what are the basic issues in the data that can create a lot of trouble for the data analysts so this is basically a scenario based question so the previous questions that we have considered were you know like they were mostly for the freshers so this particular question is for those people who have experience like hands on experience and you know like you can say one or two years of experience using looker so coming back to the question so one of the biggest headache you can say is the duplicate entries or you can say the duplicate data so although you can eliminate this duplicate data there is no full accuracy possible so this is because the same information is generally available in a different format or you can say in other sentences the common misspelling is another major trouble creator also the varying value can create a tons of issues moreover values that are illegal missing cannot be identified can enhance the chances of various errors and the same affect the quality of the data to a great extent so these were some of the issues that you can face while handling the data so let's move to the next question so what are the two common methods that can be deployed for data validation so data validation as you know these are the it is one of the very important step of an analytics project that we saw in the previous question so coming back to the question the two common methods that can be deployed for data validation are data verification and data screening so both of these methods are identical but they have different applications the next question is what do you mean by the term data cleansing or you can say the data cleaning so it is nothing but another name for data cleaning process basically there are many approaches that are considered for eliminating the inconsistencies and the errors from the data sets okay a combination of all of these approaches is considered as data cleansing so basically all the approaches or the methods have a similar target which is nothing but improving the quality of the data so with this we have come to the end of this session on looker interview questions so we have tried to cover maximum questions and i hope you have enjoyed this session so if you have any doubts related to this session then you can write them in the comments box and my team is here to help you with all your doubts and queries so i wish like each and every one of you those who have an interview related to looker to benefit from this video so thank you so much for being with us and have a good day